So, imagine you're a train driver on the main rail line between Dublin and Belfast in Ireland. It's 6.25 p.m. on a Friday evening, and the trains before and after you are full commuter trains, heavy with passengers. As you drive over Malahide Viaduct, a bridge that takes you over a big estuary, you notice the water splashing a little bit higher than usual. You look out the window, and your stomach drops. You notice part of the bridge you're driving over crumbling into the waters below. There's only track holding up you and the other passengers from falling into those waters. This actually happened. On August 2009, the fourth pier of Malahide Rail Viaduct collapsed into Broadway Meadow Estuary. Luckily, in this instance, the driver managed to coast the train safely over the bridge and called it in to halt the passing of any further trains. But this was very nearly a much larger tragedy, with human life at risk. Now, the cause of this particular failure was due to scour. Scour is where the ground material in a river or estuary is worn away, a kind of erosion that forms a hole around the foundations of a bridge. So when it's no longer supported, it's at risk of collapsing. What's scary is that this isn't an isolated incident. You can see that there are actually many more cases of this in the UK. Periods of heavy flooding in the last few years have caused collapses in Scotland, Cumbria, the south of London, um, and the south of England. There was even just a bridge collapse last month. It's actually kind of terrifying how many things fall down around us. Take this example. In August 2007, the I-35W Mississippi River Bridge collapsed. It killed 13 people and it injured a further 145. So after the collapse, a forensic investigation was undertaken. And yes, by forensic investigation, I mean in a similar way you think of a crime scene where you carry out a forensic investigation to figure out what happened. Engineers, we also carry out a forensic engineering um, activity to try and figure out why major structural collapses happen. It's a little bit like CSI for bridges, only no one's asked me to star in a hit new TV show yet. <laughs> Back to my story. Um, so this particular bridge failed because of certain plates. These plates started to bow out, and then one day they suddenly collapsed, taking the whole bridge down with it. The scary thing about this is that looking at photos taken during an, an inspection four years before this collapse revealed that you could see the bowing of this plate. Now, it was only a few millimeters, but the scary thing was it was there. We just missed it by eye. So if you think, how did we miss that? Well, actually, most countries carry out inspections by a period of, of um, standard annual or two-yearly or sometimes six-yearly visual inspections. So someone like me will come along with some drawings, and we'll look at the bridge, and we'll mark up the defects we can see, take a few photos, that kind of thing but it inherently relies on someone being able to spot signs of, of distress or unusual behaviors before they reach this kind of catastrophic stage. So, is there something else we can do? Is there something where we could remotely mund our bridges, something to give us a little bit of a hand? Could we, say, use our eyes in the sky to help us out? Another issue with our visual inspections is that things happen between these visual inspections. Things like this are strong weather effects. We're seeing the effects of climate change quite strongly. Periods of heavy rain and heavy snow, ice and storms, temperature effects, both hotter and colder, that we've never seen before. To put it simply, our structures are seeing a whole bunch of environmental conditions they weren't actually designed to experience. So if you think about the snow and, and ice, for ice, we throw around salts on the road to melt it so that we can drive and walk safely. But salts actually accelerate the process of corrosion. So we're actually deteriorating our bridges, our reinforcing in our steelwork at a faster rate. If we think back to our example of scour failure, more floods and faster flows means that we're accelerating this process of scour. And how do we monitor for scour? Well, we actually send a diver there so that someone can go see firsthand exactly what's happening. But even this has limitations. You can't send a diver during a flood event itself for danger of the diver and lack of visibility. Even when the waters are lower, the diver is at risk because, well, you're sending someone down to a structure that could potentially collapse on them. And then finally, 
even if everything is fine and you send a camera down to look, if there's a little bit of material that's loose that covers that hole, you may not even see that there's a difference. So again, we need a remote way of doing this. We need something that can detect tiny millimeter levels of movement that our eyes miss. And lucky for us, we have some friends. We have satellites. So, I'm a civil engineer. I work in the design, building, maintenance, and construction of bridges and, and rail lines and schools and hospitals and water treatment and energy sources, the, the things that are all around us that you take for granted. But I'm also really passionate about keeping our cities safe and keeping them healthy enough to be able to stand, withstand these kinds of these climate changes. So now I'm working in the space sector. I work with organizations like the German Aerospace Center and the Satellite Applications Catapult to use satellites to try and help us prevent some of these catastrophic failures. So, I specifically use a technique called radar interferometry. This is where satellites like these ones pass over the Earth. They send pulses of electromagnetic radiation which hit the surface and are reflected back up to the satellite, giving it a bit of information. So every time one of these satellites passes, say, over this building, it sends a signal which is sent down, bounces back, and sent back up again. The next time it comes back, it does that again. And this time it takes for the signal to fly down and then come back tells us a little bit about how much that's moved since the previous image. So how do we use that practically? Well, historically, it's been used in large-scale deformations, such as volcanoes or earthquakes. But what's really exciting is that the resolution is finally small enough that we can do things at a city scale, or maybe even a single building or bridge scale. So it might be easier if we just look at a simple example. This is a piece of work done with Telespazio, um, which is looking at London. So the river you can see is the Thames, and this is the area just north. Each of these little dots represents a reflection point. Now, these reflection points are tracked over time, and so these are now being color-coded to show um, movement as millimeters per year over, over time. The red dots represent things that are sinking. Green is stable, and if there was blue, it would be uplift. So you can see that an area just north of the O2 is rapidly sinking. Now, it looks a little bit alarming, but scale is everything here. The red dots show movement that's no larger than the size of this penny. Really tiny. Um, so then you say, well, why do we care? If you think about, say, taking off the size of a penny off one of the chairs of your leg, you'll notice the difference. Similarly, if we have part of our buildings sinking, it's not the same effect, but there might be a problem, and it's something that we need to be aware of. In this particular case, what happened here was the construction of a new rail line, um, underground tunneling, where they dug and put in a shaft. To install that shaft, they needed to dewater, remove the water from that area. When they removed the water, the whole area sunk. Um, and when they returned the water, this actually rose back up again. So then, how does this apply for our bridges? Well, if we can start monitoring certain points along a bridge using our radar, then we might be able to tell a little bit when it's not doing what we're expecting. If we combine structural knowledge to, to plan how it should behave, can we spot things that, that are a little bit off? I don't know if you know this, but bridges aren't actually designed to stay still. They're actually designed to expand and contract. They have expansion joints, and they have components called bearings. So if a bridge can't move and expand and contract, then stresses build up and we have problems. So that's just one way to look at it. Another way is our example right from the beginning, scour failure. Can we see these tiny movements before they cause a problem? So here's just one example from my work, um, where here's a bridge that, that we monitored various different points along the length of the bridge. Now, in the next slide, we're going to consider that point in the middle of the bridge. We monitored this over time, so you can see tiny, tiny movements over time a couple years before um, a certain event. In the first year, in 2014, the bridge moved around a little fairly steady. Then, in 2015, it still moves around fairly steadily, but towards the end of 2015 was a period of heavy flooding in the north of England. And we noticed this in November, slightly away from the rest of its friends. Then, again, a little further away. And we carry on, and we carry on. 
And then we get to December. And what happens in December? Well, that happened in December. <laughs> the bridge partially collapsed after a period of severe flooding. Now, this is just one example, and there's still plenty of work to be done to develop this to proper scientific rigor. But it's a really exciting example of what we could possibly do with this kind of technology. We're currently limited by access to data, the resolution, the number of images we're able to get at a given time. But the space sector, it's rapidly advancing. I'm really excited about working in this field because we have not yet even started to scratch the surface with where these opportunities could go. There's an old nursery rhyme, you may know it. London Bridge is falling down. Well, London Bridge is certainly not falling down. But it sure would be nice to have a pair of eyes in the sky just to check that it wasn't, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.